Hello, this is uh, Dave and welcome to Equity Story. I'm with the Wolf and uh, general share advice, not personal advice. And Wolfie, we saw a bounce on the markets, uh, you know, started to happen. And again, last night, uh, the Dow uh, slightly up. And obviously, we saw the Nasdaq up a little bit more. And guess what? You're starting to see the Dow break above a short-term trend, which is good. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to see this nice little, little bounce. And uh, uh, again, with the Nasdaq, that bounce... Uh, starting to look a little bit stronger. So, you know, I did a day, Wolf, we look like, uh, so let's go back to our market, XJO, and obviously we're starting to see a little bit of bounce. I wonder if we're going to get that bounce over the next month, Wolf, back up to trend, right? Mm -hmm. um, good price action, Wolfie. So what we're seeing is possibly uh, some opportunities just to short-term trade on the daily chart, maybe some good stories. So can we start the session with those stories? We're here to look to try and make money for people. So yep. I think that's the that's a, the the place to start. And uh, I want to go start with XRO. Now, obviously, we know it's not trending on the weekly, but the daily is starting to wake up. And that is excellent, excellent price action, Wolf. Mm. And, you know, no problem for someone to have a day trade on that. Uh, look to buy it around that 90.40. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe uh, we'll, um, you know, you can have your stop loss just under that 84.49 around there if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, you know, if you're a little bit more nervy about the markets, you're welcome to. I can tighten this up a little bit for you. That's only 5%, Dave. I don't think it's that 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 much. 84.70 something is 5% is actually quite a nice number. Yeah, you could go on that high 89.27. I, I don't think it should go below that. Mm. Oof right so if you did want to make it a little bit tighter i think you could i mean yeah because you know if you look there's a lot of resistance at that at that 80 it came hit, hit it a few times didn't it around that sort of uh sorry the, 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 the only thing i'm worried about dave with that strategy is you could have one of these big red candles like you've seen during the week and you get nervous and get out and then it bounces the next day so that's the only thing reason why maybe i wouldn't put it so tight because you could have that one yeah. day that's yeah. all yeah, okay, but what we're going to do, we're just going to go by previous price action, right? All right, all right. Well, we're going to stick to you because you're the, you're the master, so I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm being... Not, no, the, I'm not the master. Head. I'm not the master at all, Wolf. But you've got, you've got that high of 88. So if you wanted to go really tight, you could be 87, 90. Okay. And like you said, if you wanted to get let it breathe a little bit more, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you could go to that 84, 45, around there. Okay. Great. So for those people tight, it's fine. You could go a little bit up there for that sort of 87, 90 and give it a little bit of leeway. You could go to sort of just below that, say 84, 50. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll give, uh, give two, op two possibilities to everyone, see how mm -hmm. they, whichever way they want to do it. Uh, Wolf, an interesting one was one that you came up with. I mean, it's a little bit early seek for me, but you know, it's a quality story, right? And, you know, when you're looking to trend, you're looking to trend quality stories. And, you know, your idea with Seek is say, come on, Dave, let's, let's try and go a little bit early. Mm -hmm. And I think I like what you're saying about this, Wolf, because, you know, you, you have had a breakout. It is trading today higher than it's traded for, you know, a good month and a half. Mm -hmm. The price action is looking good. Um, you know, you can see it. You can see it coming back up to 24, 56 at least on the weekly mm -hmm. um and you know what you could give it a little bit of leeway you've got a stop loss below the trend if you want to do you could just give it a little bit more leeway around that sort of 2170 level right mm -hmm. the reason why i would a little bit early on this one fundamentally dave is that in the space that's in unemployment right employment mm -hmm. really low and so so there's there's companies out there advertising the hell out of their positions because they want attract workers so you can see that it should be very, very, very buoyant for the for at Seek uh, as a as a business, right? So I'm thinking that's why we could jump in a little bit early on this one. Um, I, I love that Wolf because what you're doing, you're really mixing the fundamentals with the technicals, and having a, a little bit more belief in the fundamentals that this yep. is going to go on with it. Yep, absolutely love it, Wolf, and uh, and and I think it's a great, great idea. And you, you know, and the important thing is, Wolf, you got your stop loss exactly the same yep. as before. Um, now. Surprise, surprise, Prometicus, hello. I'm um, mm -hmm. starting to move. I mean, 
you know, maybe a little bit better, you know, when it had that little buy signal, but it's starting to go on with it. And uh, uh, you've got to like the price action. So again, possibly worth having a look at. Um, yep. I think you, I'd use halfway for that candle, a little bit where that, where that close was back here. So I'll try and give everyone a stop loss on this, uh, which would be that close. Uh, so maybe 40, 47, 45 would mm -hmm. be my stop loss on PME if I was buying it around here. And, you know, you, you, you sort of, you're looking, you're looking to, come on, can we have a little bit of a run up? Can we go and retest mm -hmm. that 53, you know, not being greedy, Wolf, you're not being yes. greedy, right? And you this know? is the thing, Dave, you know, when you say, I, I love, you know, this is a beautiful thing about it. When you're day trading, you don't have to wait weeks. You can take your profits in two or three days when you get that three, four, five percent, right? That's what this you're taking the very small bits right now. That's all we that's all we need. Yeah. Also just scalping three or four yep. percent. That's yep. all you look at. Yep. Wolf TLX came out with an announcement today. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. you could you just sort of, you 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 liked the announcement, didn't you? Sort of well, um, it's moving from the you know pre-commercialization phase to commercialization phase, which is always exciting for a company. Uh, but of course, it ultimately means revenue is coming through, right? So cash flows, uh, I know it's early days, but it's starting to ramp up significantly, going from almost nothing to about 20, right? Which you're going to probably see that cash flow coming through. Obviously, the quarterly didn't obviously reflect that, but the revenues will probably come in over the next quarter. Uh, so you can see that elusive sales are going to probably be fairly significant for them in 2023. So if you are looking for a punts on a biotech slash healthcare stock, then possibly you've got a pretty interesting story that's really moved up from maybe like a tier four, because, you know, biotechs are really, really risky type stuff to maybe tier three, tier two. Um, and Wolf, you know, you got to be a bit careful on this. It's obviously had a move, but you know you'd look to target just under seven dollars, yeah. and I think you put your stop loss at five eighty around here. You know there was a bit of resistance there. Mm -hmm. It's starting to swing. It's got a buy signal. I think it should go on with it. Mm -hmm. uh, if it doesn't, you just got your stop loss slightly below. Yep. Wolf CDA, which is mm -hmm. we we actually put on as a contrarian play. We put on a few times. It's starting to work for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, you know, if, if you put it on a thousand times, we're going to work it once. Once we're going to get it. We're definitely going to get it once. Uh, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, it just shows it's all about patience. Exactly. And it starts to work. It look good. Now, my question for you, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've seen a little bit of a breakout here on the daily. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe it's had a bit of a run, but is it too late to buy this as a contrarian play? No, no. They, they, you know, it's, it's still, let's look at the fundamentals. I'll put it in. And you know what? You know, I've been kicked. I've been kicked. In the cajones, you know, saying CDA, it's not working, la, 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 la. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to have the last laugh on this. It's yeah. going to work. So it's trending. I'll tell you what it's going to trend on. Uh, it's trending on uh, 15 times at a 5% yield. I mean, still looks pretty good at this at 8.28. I'll be buying this still. Okay. Thanks, Wolf, for that. And, and, and you know, if you look at that, uh, you know, it's certainly tradable. If the momentum's there, you've got a... Stop loss just under eight dollars. If you want to take a short term trade and maybe look for that eight fifty, maybe a little bit higher. And I think this is the thing. Don't be greedy with this, right? Yes, it's a contrarian play. So if you take the long term view, you could possibly see that back to 10, 12 bucks, say over the next two, three years, right? But if you want to take the quick, quick ride here, you possibly could make that two or three, four, five percent out of this uh, to that nine dollars, right? And that would be nice. That would be enough for the short per period. Um, Wolf ACL. So unfortunately, we're seeing the the resurgence of uh, COVID, mm -hmm. um, and I think sort of uh, SHL, ACL, mm -hmm. these sort of stories are, are going to be helped. And actually, if you look at ACL, looks great on the weekly. Actually, it looks very very good. Mm -hmm. um, but likewise, you see the sort of breakup over the daily. Mm -hmm. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, Tell me, Dave, can you have a look at all three three stories? Helios. SHL and ACL, which one do you prefer, technically speaking? Okay, let's have a look at them. So mm -hmm. um, ACL, really nice off the weekly, right? So maybe not so, not, maybe not so much for a day trade, more of a longer term trade. I think ACL looks good. Um, HLS. You know, it's annoying a little bit about HLS. I think it could have done a little bit better. 
mm-hmm. I think you need to see it trending back over trade. So yeah. I'm not, a little bit early. Yeah, not quite, not quite there. But I think SHL, which we did have a little nose yet earlier, Wolf. You know, I like it. You know, it's starting to break above uh, trend. It's got a little bit of move, uh, room to move, but getting up back up uh, to the trend line. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with this. You know why? Uh, looked at, you know, if it's trading around 34, 45, you've got a lovely little stop loss anyway. It's sort of 33.80 just below trend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you might go up and retest somewhere just under that uh, 37. I like yeah. it, Wolf, because... You know, it's you know the whole world at the moment is is talking about uh, COVID and yes, you know more testing and mm-hmm. you know obviously you're more people in hospital. You you'd think both these stories could have a little bit of a a leg up, but maybe I would I agree with the scenario on that one. I think uh, ACL looking better on a on a more of a weekly chart, mm-hmm. uh, but for a short term trade, I think SHL a little bit more juicy wolf. And you know what? I have to go with SHL as well because fundamentally, I mean, it's quality. Uh, it's better oh. than ACL by miles. And you know what? You've got more volume as well, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, you've got Definitely. more volume. Now, another story that's got plenty of volume is starting to sort of poke its head up, Wolf. And this, you know, this was an idea of a contrarian play. This is yes. actually working out really well. It looks like you're not going to be selling Natalie, unfortunately, for Natalie, because I know... Well, th- thank God for me. I know. It's pretty I know. well. I can't I lose her. I think Natalie was hoping to get sold, actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, thanks, Dave. I think... Um, uh, so she... Uh, so unfortunately for Natalie, she won't be getting sold, which she'll be a bit upset about. But um, but the price actually looks good, Wolf, doesn't it? I mean, it had a ter- tremendous sell-off from 60 cents. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it looks like it, it's at least working its way back up to trend, maybe 53. Yeah. Um, and that is a great price, actually. A little bit of a breakout. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on, SWM. And if, you, if you're not in it, I don't think it's too late, Wolf. You could buy it here. You've got a stop loss just under 0. Uh, you know, give it a little bit of leeway. If you want 0. 0. 0. 0. 0.4390, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good opportunity to buy right now. If you haven't got in, or if you made a little already quick profit, yeah. like the, the fund has, we we're in and out, so we made a little profit. That this could be another opportunity to make another little profit. Yeah, definitely. Why not? I mean, a class story wolf yep. trading at ridiculously low, low multiples, overly sold, starting to look better on the daily. Come on, I think we've got a little trade there. And come all games coming up, and I think you know that this is. I think uh, it's Channel 7, I think, are showing it. So th- there's, there's no more probably advertising coming through for SWF. Um, Wolf, NTO. Mm-hmm. I, again, I, you've got to like the price action. So yeah. let's have a look at, you know, we know it's been tremendously sold off. Mm-hmm. It started to break up a little bit. It's found a bit of support. I like that, Wolf. And I'll tell you what, I like the, I like both these sort of charts for a, a short-term trade. And you've got the little breakout, which looks very, very good. Um, you know, you, you've got your stop loss. Ooh, what's, we can have a look at this. I mean, you've got two stop losses you can use. If you want to go tight, tight, you can go 140, maybe 145, just under that 150, which is a natural stop loss. Mm-hmm. Or you can just go, you can just use your trend line and go maybe 136, 130, 135 around there, yeah? Yep. Uh, two opportunities there, but I like that uh, chart, Wolf. I really do. Um, and again, the story... Uh, hasn't been really not delivered, has it, in all fairness to it? Yeah, um, well, it's, 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 this is the thing, right? They are stocks marked for various reasons. You know, tech stocks, you name it, they've been sold down. Some of them be more than others because they are unprofitable and so on. But they are still good stories underneath the bonnet that, you know, they are growing its top line revenues and trying to obviously uh, expand and so on. It's just, you know, they just got caught in this vacuum of risk is off. Um, sold down, and they are just just trying to recover from really being oversold positions. So this is this is where we come in and say, okay, which ones are the best ones to play with? And technically, Dave, you are the expert in that field. Um, I'm looking at fundamentals. We put them together, and we've come up with some really interesting stories. And you know, Nitro is also makes that great. While well, it's a little bit more riskier because it's unprofitable, you know, you can still make money. Look at it. I mean, it's probably poised to go up to that 170, 180. Well, another one of your favorite stocks, again, has started to break up very nice on the daily is Altium, ALU. Uh, again, uh, a quality story, n- mm-hmm. no question about it. Yep. Um, you know, got a little bit of a uh, move up, uh, room up here to get back to 32. Yep. But um, certainly, 
very nice. And you got different stop losses. You can go really tight on this if you want, uh, about 29.45, or you can go just below that 28.50 mark, say 28.45, if you want to give it a little bit more room to breathe. And you've got a nice little target, 32. Well, what's wrong with that? Nice, what's that? Nice little four or five percent, right? Yes. Yeah, and you know, there you go. There's another opportunity and a big story. You know, we don't even that, that we don't even have to go into that really micro cap, nano cap space. We can if if you've gone for about 10 really big stories that are the charts on the dailies look fantastic. And I wolf, I think we'll leave those ideas there. There is 360, but I think 360 is a little bit more risk in that. I know I do like the chart, I must be honest. I mean, that breakout is looking very, very good. That sort of, that, you know, that it's looking like it could have a run up to $5. Mm -hmm. uh, the only reason, and it's a little bit of resistance there. The only thing that I think makes you a little bit nervous on this one is, is it's still very much a tier three, isn't it? With yes. It's obviously burning yes. a lot of cash, but it doesn't mean it can't get back. To no, it, you could do an MP1. You could come up, you yeah. know, with an update saying that, well, hang on a second, we've we've actually gone cash flow positive. And all of a sudden, it could Bang. jump two or three bucks in a day, right? So, there, so there's definitely another idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, there's a number of ideas there, Wolf. Yep. Of stories which are um, some quality stories there. Yes. Which are looking pretty good on the daily. Yes. Uh, which in this market could continue to to bounce a little bit, mm -hmm. right? um and and uh again high risk because we're looking at daily charts it's not normally what Absolutely. we like to do here at equity story and so it's high risk but uh, i think we're worth having a look yes so wolfie thank you for that and go through those stories and we're we're obviously trying to do as this market's having a bounce we'll look to see where we can scalp money mm -hmm. week in uh week in week out mm -hmm. um now i just want to talk about some announcements obviously the tlx uh came out of announcement today, which you're pretty bullish about. Yeah, that was that move from, you know, commercialization. That's why we got the chart on for you guys. So that's probably what we're concentrating on right now on a quick trade. Yep. PPL. Mm -hmm. um, so might be a few questions on this one. What, you know, the, the thing is, it's had that really great bounce up, but uh, it's got a, it's had, got a little bit of a, a, a gap to bridge there. So, you know, that sort of puts me off charting it a little uh, sorry, little wolf, big wolf. <laughs> um, Whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, wolf. So, so that, uh, what did you make of the announcement? Because Look, the, I, the headlines, the headline numbers were very good, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. On the surface of it, it looks pretty good, right? Because it had a pretty strong growth and so on. But remember, the, the market looks at both two things. It looks at okay, what are, what did you come up with, and what are you going to come up with? Uh, and the second part has been unanswered because they didn't give any guidance whatsoever. Uh, so for me, it's a little bit of a question mark. Uh, and when you look at the business model, and I look, I like the story, but when you know there's maybe a soft period coming up, maybe possible recessions globally, and this is not a model where it's got recurring revenues, right? You could see the sales maybe dry up a little bit. Um, so potentially there is could be a, some risk ahead or some turbulence ahead. So for me, I, I'd say I'd put that to the side. I would not be getting too excited at this one yet. I think the other stories are better. M7 T Wolf. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, um, we had a look at this one and it sort of had a bit of a run on the on the daily. And so it's hard to sort of buy that price action. And again, there's a bit of resistance there on M7 T, but certainly Wolf, not looking a lot better, that's for sure. Look, Dave, um, you know, you used to trade way, way higher than this, right? At the 150, 160 almost. Market cap, 170 million, uh, revenues of about 26. So that puts it well below 10 times uh, revenues, right? Which, you know, remember we looked at before in the good old times, you, you, we just didn't want to touch anything over 10. So now it's now below, below 10. We're looking at closer to the five mark. It's getting quite interesting. And I suppose you could have a, have a play with this. No, no doubt. I, I think that the numbers were good enough for me to get interested again and start moving up the list. Okay. Um... So maybe this one, then we'll wait. Uh, just wait for an opportunity. We'll have a look where. I think let's wait for the. Let's wait till tomorrow and see where we can reassess it. We'll see see where it's at. Yeah, just need to. I think you can find a nice little opportunity on the daily to buy it. Yep. Um, now, WDS, mm -hmm. as expected. Obviously, those revenue numbers were very very strong. Wolf, 
Uh, mm. The market was expecting it. Possibly, um, it's all about expectations, isn't it? Maybe they're most probably more or less where the market expected. They certainly, it doesn't look by the price action, they've overly outperformed expectations, that's for sure. No, I mean, the, the, look, there's a, there's a probably one part of Woodside where maybe people just forget about is that they've got actually long-term contracts in place. So there's not going to be too much benefit out of higher oil and gas. But while, you know, it will probably move up and down with their oil prices, a lot of those pricings are over 10-year type periods, which maybe they get indexed with some movements. But generally speaking, unless, you know, they are selling on markets spot prices, which they're not, it's not going to matter too much for them. So maybe it's all about new projects and growth and so on with Woodside. You know, they're adding that BHP portfolio to the, to the repertoire is a big plus. Um, so look, it's still a premier stock in Australia, oil and gas wise. I like it, but you know, you, you still have to have that positive sentiment in this space. And I think at the moment we're in the crossroads. I, I don't think it, it, is, it was as buoyant as previously, maybe a month back, right, with oil and gas. Uh, so I'm just interested to see where it goes from here. Uh, oil just above 100. Where where does it go from here? I, I'm not sure. Wolf, does it sort of? I say, I you know what? For me, it's still a hold. And I, I think when you're reading about Ukraine overnight, they're talking about escalation of the war there. Yes. And okay. and which is a little bit of a concern, right? Because um, I think they're saying now that the Ukrainians are looking to attack Crimea. Mm -hmm. And the Russians have come back and said, thank you, America, for delivering all these long range weapons. That means now we're going to have to go deeper into Ukraine and take more of the country. So not good. It's not good. Uh, the rhetoric you're hearing out of uh, Europe and Ukraine, Wolf. And yeah, that's a, I think, I think, again, Dave, you know, this is a very, very difficult situation. Um, it doesn't matter. I, I don't, it's just an excuse for Russia wanted to hold bloody Ukraine anyway. So anything that, they, you know, anything that's there for them to use an excuse they will and it looks like a journal affair look Dave I told you at the beginning that Putin is not just after the little piece of Ukraine he wants the whole lot and he will just is it, isn't it. isn't then that wolf what you're saying be supportive with higher oil prices it, it is in a way yes it is but you know there's not just Russia there there's OPEC which can potentially you know so that's why Biden went to Saudi Arabia to ask them to release the valves and, and he, buy he more did. oil Right. Yeah, he, did, he didn't get he didn't get much uh, good news out of them, did he? He got a little bit of give, but uh, not much. Look, maybe there's something in the background they're still working on. Then, of course, they've got America who can also turn the taps on if they wanted to further. So, I look, I, like I said, it, it, oil is a difficult beast because there's lots of moving little parts that you can that you can potentially um, lever it. But whether you know, I, look, I, I agree with you. I think there's the the war in Ukraine is supportive of oil gas prices. But on the other hand, there's other things that at play that might curtail that, you know, what we think sometimes the, the, the war in Ukraine should see that the oil price spike up to 200 bucks. Yes, in theory, yes. But there's other, other factors that could potentially say, no, it's going to stay at 100. All right. It's going to be an interesting time. But mm -hmm. anyway, listen, I get what you're saying. Yeah. The, chart, the chart is actually a hold on Woodside. Yep. So if, I, if I was in it, I was holding it. I um, agree. Newcrest came out with an announcement today. I tell you what, if you're going to go gold, it's got to be Newcrest, hasn't it? Those numbers were excellent, Wolf, those uh, production numbers. Yep. Yeah, and okay, this is the thing, you know, I've, I've called it a long time ago that Newcrest is my favorite big player in the gold space, right? Nothing's changed. The only thing that's changed is the gold's just been weak and uh, no, one, no sentiment in it means that the gold stocks are going to get hit, and they have been. Yet, Newcrest come up with a nice quarterly. Uh, so, you know, saying that, you, would you be in it? No, you wouldn't. You, you're definitely playing the tech stocks, which are looking much better. Um, Wolf, um, and obviously Santos, as you could put it in the same boat really as, as uh, Woodside. Woodside yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's holding in there. You'd, mm -hmm. you'd like to see it trend a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, do we have to talk about Zip? I don't think we do. We're not no, in it. No, it's, look, it's just been, it's actually been fairly okay and poor at the same time, <laughs> where the numbers are still growing year on year, but quarter on quarter, it looks fairly bleak. We had LIC came out yesterday, a very strong announcement. Uh, unfortunately, it's just at the top of that weekly range, so it's it's not a buy. And and that's and I suppose your worry is, you know, you look at the daily. I think that resistance at sixteen, but the, the danger is the whole sector as a whole, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, really, because because the, 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 there's there's two parts to LIC. One that that they get um, cash earnings right out of the sales and some other fees and rents. 
the other part is revaluation of the properties they've got, right? The revaluation, re re which is the non-cash part, is actually was actually quite stagnant. Stagnant if you look at the numbers from yesterday, um, which brings me to the point of I think that's probably going to continue over the next say six to twelve months because real estate market right now it's cooling off, so I can't see that increasing for them, which means it could potentially have some sort of a break on the recovery here for me. So while I like the one numbers I saw right with the cash earnings, it's the the overall picture which are a little bit um, sus about. So. Yeah, I love the story, but not, not at the moment. Thanks, Wolfie. And we're going to end on um, YAL. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, coal in play. It's not a bad-looking chart. You're iffy with the announcement. Well, you know, again, it's a coal, coal story that's huge margins, right? Like I said, you know, two days ago, the, the margins are precedented. Three billion EBITs on some of these things. I think Yanko is saying now they've got over one and a half billion in cash. And they still don't want to pay any extra taxes, right? But it's the problem with Yanko, they had a little bit more problems in their production, I think, profile um, for weather related and, 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 and as such. So for me, it wasn't as clean as the other um, results that we've seen. That's why maybe for me, it's a little bit more muted than the others. You know, it still should, relatively speaking, produce some really eye catching numbers, but I prefer New Hopes and White Havens of the world. And, and at the end of the day, Wolf, you, 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 you're, you're getting a nice little 12% divvy out of this with a P of 10. I mean, yeah, not know. bad, is it? I mean, it was a great time to be in, in a cold story, I suppose. You're gonna, you're laughing. I think if you're in it, you'd be definitely holding it. Yeah. Um, on that note, Wolfie, thank you so much. Some ideas there for everybody, and uh, always good to uh, obviously, uh, hear just one more thing, Dave. I just want to just, just mention one, one thing with this coal stories and even iron ore stories is remember this remember these times right we want to buy these things cyclical lows when nobody wants to touch them because you can go from two bucks to six bucks very quickly uh and you know we've seen with fmgs of the world you can go from five bucks to 25 bucks very quickly so this is why we you know we when we play these sort of yang coals and think you can we can trade them short time no problems but generally speaking you want to sort of get in the early <laughs> because they can really move up, go from unprofitable to making three billion, three billion EBITDA in a space of a 12 to 18 months. So this is just another little lesson for everyone to take out, take on board and remember it for, for next time. Yeah, and, and often that, that move is just when it's broken up, isn't it? That's exactly like, right. You can get in early, yeah, right? You don't yeah. have to you know, suffer and, and miss out, for sure. Yeah, that lovely mm. little price action. There you go. On that note, Wolfie, thank you very, very much. Have a good day. Cheers, guys. Bye.